I predict that by the time you get to your final exam, if you can get this question correct, you're going to earn an A or a B in this course. And I predict students who can't do this question by the time you finish statics are likely to get a C, D, or F. Today I'm joined by my TA Indiana for this statics video because this is a bellwether question. This question will expose students who just try to memorize formulas and just try to plug in the right number in the right place. But I want all of you to earn an A or a B in this class, so stick around to ensure that you are thinking about statics properly and not just memorizing formulas, and I'll show you specifically where that will lead to mistakes. So there's three main ways to find a moment about a point. The first is the vector formulation where you do a cross product, R cross F. For this problem, R is your position vector from A to B, and then F is the force vector. And in order to do the cross product, you're gonna need them both in Cartesian form, that's I, J, K components. That's not the method I recommend. The math actually works out to be about the same as the scalar method, but conceptually it's a little bit more confusing than the scalar method, so I recommend skipping number one. For method two, force times distance, you need a force and a distance that are perpendicular to each other. So in order to use the given distance, you need to project that red force F onto this purple force. And you can find the angle to do that, but it's really easy to make a mistake finding that angle. Alternatively, you can keep the 200 Newton force and find this new distance D that is the perpendicular distance from this force to point A. This is not impossible to do either, but again, this is not the easiest way to solve this problem. And the reason I don't recommend those is because neither of those result in finding the X and Y components of that 200 Newton force which if you want the reaction forces at point A, you're gonna need the X and Y components anyway. Then you might as well do the scalar formulation method for finding the moment, which requires you to find the X and Y components of force and an X and Y component of your distance. So these four purple terms are the ones that you need. The horizontal component of force, vertical component of force, horizontal distance, vertical distance. So the first major mistake that students who don't pass statics are gonna make is just think that moment is force times distance, multiply 200 times four and get 800 Newton meters and call it good. So to get over that hurdle, you need to find your X and Y components, X and Y distances. The second major mistake that I would expect students who get a D or F in statics to make is in dealing with that 20 degree angle. In trigonometry, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Since this 20 degree angle is measured with respect to the Y axis, the adjacent side is the vertical direction. So the Y component of this force is cosine of 20 degrees. The horizontal axis is the opposite the 20 degrees, and so the force component is 200 sine 20 degrees for the X direction. And then I've manually inserted these negative signs because the red 200 Newton force is pointing left, which is the negative X direction, and down the negative Y direction. So to formally solve this problem, I've drawn a free body diagram where I've replaced the fixed joint at A with forces in the X and Y direction, and also a moment because a fixed joint resists forces in X and Y and moments. So I've got the final answer up on the screen, and the reaction forces at AX and AY are just equal to the X and Y components of that 200 Newton force. For the sum of moments at A, I arbitrarily chose the clockwise direction to be positive, but if you call it the other direction, that's fine too. So I had negative MA because the way I drew MA on my free body diagram is going in the negative direction that I chose. The downward pointing force is positive because as you can see by this purple arrow, it would cause clockwise rotation about point A. And the X direction term is negative because again, by this new purple arrow, you can see that it would cause counterclockwise rotation about point A, which is the negative direction. So an extremely common mistake is to use the X component force with the X direction distance instead of the Y direction distance. And so the way to avoid making the mistake as to which distance to use is to not draw a small little arrow like I've drawn here. Instead, draw yourself a big honking arrow that goes all the way across your entire page because the actual length of the arrow is completely arbitrary. And so now if I asked how far is that purple X component arrow from point A, it's now much more clear that it's that vertical distance Y. That's how far it is away. So now let's repeat the same thing for Y. Draw a hugely long arrow in the Y direction that just goes from top to bottom of your page. And when trying to find how far this line is from point A, 
it becomes very clear that you need the horizontal distance. So this is the way you should be thinking about moments. Don't just memorize force times distance or force times perpendicular distance. Picture your force as extending infinitely forward and backwards along its direction of action, and this will help you see the closest distance that it comes to your point of interest. And for a vertical force, that will be a horizontal distance. For a horizontal force, it will be a vertical distance. If you think that some of your classmates would benefit from this video, please hit the thumbs up so that it will appear higher in search and it will be easier for them to find it. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.